Hello everyone, it's great to be joining you online today and bringing you a short reflection on our passage this morning from Mark. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Lex and I'm an ordinant here at St James and Emmanuel and I'm just about to enter into my second and final year of training, which is incredibly exciting but also very daunting. To get to where I am now, I've had to go through a rigorous process of interviews. The first part was filling out forms trying to communicate to people why I felt that God was calling me to be a priest. The second part was I had to meet with people in various positions within the church and communicate to them why I thought God was calling me to be a priest. Now, all of this leads up to one big interview called a Bishop's Advisory Panel, also known as a BAP for short. Now, because during this time, we were in the middle of a pandemic. Mine, BAP, was on Zoom, and it was made into two one-hour intense interviews. One of the questions that I was asked before my first interview to reflect and think about was what did I think was the most important characteristic of a Christian leader? Without hesitation, the first thing that came to my mind was integrity. I personally value integrity above most other things when it comes to characteristics. I have a high level of respect for those who not only talk the talk, but also then walk the walk. And I think not only does this apply to Christians leaders, but other Christians as well, all of us that follow Jesus. Now, in a minute, we're going to hear a bit more about how integrity applies to our passage from my good friend Alex this morning. But for now, let's worship the Lord together in song. Hello, I'm Alex, a regular member of the 615 Emmanuel service. Let's dive into this passage. Hand washing has been talked about so much in recent times. And it's the main theme in this passage. We have all been reminded that there is a right way to wash our hands. 20 seconds, warm water, plenty of soap. And we know from our secular scientific knowledge that this prevents the spread of disease. But I ask you, what are your motivations behind this hand washing ritual? Are you doing it out of tradition taught to you by your parents, elders and the NHS? Or is there a deeper Christian reason? Is it to help others and therefore love thy neighbor and therefore an act of worship towards God. In this passage, Jesus states, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Now, Jesus is not against traditions, so much as making it clear it's not about the actions, but about the motivation and the intent behind them. It's easy to come to church and take part in traditions, and the Church of England does have a lot of traditions, but Jesus asks us, what is our motivation? Are we here out of habit? Are we here so that other people will see us being here? Or are we truly here to praise God? And if it's that, if we're here to praise the Lord, how do we know it's not in vain? Jesus says, they worship me in vain. These teachings are merely human. We must, as always, remain integral. Integral to the word of God, integral to the teachings of Christ and integral to our own Christian faith. We extend our worship beyond the human teachings by extending them beyond the traditions of a Sunday church service, ensuring we have a Christian intent and worship in everything we do, even in something as mundane and routine as washing our hands. It's not the act of what we do, but the reasoning behind what we do and making sure it's always pointing towards Jesus.